Hello, good morning. I am Dr. Anil Goody. I'm a consultant in reproductive medicine. And today I'm going to be reviewing a paper which is slightly different and challenges a new concept. The paper is of gonadotrophin releasing hormone analog as a sole luteal phase support, which means that you give GNRH analog without any other luteal phase support. And how did that work? This was a paper published in Fertility Sterility 2017. And it looked at a very large trial which suggested that we use GNRH agonist analog as a substitute for progesterone in the luteal phase. Traditionally, the luteal phase is supported in IVF by progesterone, either vaginal or injectable. And in this case, they used nasal agonist given every day instead of progesterone. It is probably one of the first studies of this large size. All stimulation was started on day three. Again, you, you cannot use it in a long protocol. Either recombinant FSH or HMG was given. It was a flexible antagonist protocol, not a fixed antagonist protocol. And in all these cases, oocyte maturation was triggered with Ovitra, which is HCG. The luteal phase was divided into two groups. There was luteal phase, GRH analog was given as a luteal phase from a day of oocyte retrieval, one puff taken nasally, that's 200 microgram of cyanural, and later on this was doubled to morning and evening. Endometrium, 200 was given twice a day or crinone gel was given in the other group of patients. Progesterone and E2 was evaluated in the mid-luteal phase and a satisfactory range was 30 nanomole per litre. Now, in 2,529 cycles, 1,436 has GNRH analog as a luteal phase support 1093 had progesterone. Results were that the GNRH analog luteal phase support had a higher pregnancy rate of 27.9% and the progesterone only had a, a higher had a pregnancy rate of 19.8%. In women in the range of 35 to 39, the significant was much higher with GNRH analog giving a 33.4% pregnancy rate, while progesterone giving a 24.9%. In very young women and older women, the pregnancy rate was not very difficult. Now, the, one of the new things that we have been learning is that if you start measuring mid-luteal, progesterone and estrogen, it is telling us more about the luteal phase. Now in the mid-luteal progesterone was much higher in the analog trigger luteal phase rather than the progesterone. So let's come back to what we learned from this. What this study indicates is that women who had GNRH analog as a luteal phase support given daily had a higher pregnancy rate and a higher mid-luteal progesterone. This probably suggests that GNRH analog may probably be making the luteal phase more favorable. Cochrane review also suggested that if you use GNRH analog as a support in the luteal phase and combine with it progesterone, pregnancy rates were higher than giving only progesterone. What is the mechanism? Now, the hypothesis seems to work at three levels. One, at the level of the corpus luteum. Remember one very important thing, that HCG was given as a trigger here. Analog was not given as a trigger. 
and when HCG was given as a trigger, there is some amount of luteal phase support that is already given. Now, when you continue giving GnRH analog, you are prolonging the life of the corpus luteum. And how do you do that? You do that because the analog triggers the release of LH, which starts supporting the corpus luteum. There's also evidence that it promotes the secretion of relaxin by the corpus luteum. Now the endometrium also changes. If there is adequate LH release, there's a positive impact on the endometrium with the growth of angiogenic factors. And it also seems to stimulate cytokine factors. At the end for the embryo, the prolongation of the corpus luteum is always going to help the embryo to implant much better. Now the question is asked is, are GNRH analogs safe? Often when you give the long protocol, you sometimes see women who fall pregnant while in treatment. And there is good evidence of GNRH RH pregnancies. And this was done in 1998, it was a long time ago, where 340 women got unexpectedly pregnant while on GNRH analogs. The congenital abnormality was 2.5%, which is comparable to the general population of 2.29%. The pregnancy loss was 15% compared to that in the general population of 22%. So what we know is that if somebody does achieve a pregnancy while on GNRH analog, pregnancy rates still seem to be continuing reasonably well. With regards to GNRH analog depot preparation, we use it in long protocols. We see small amounts of the peptide for between seven to nine weeks. There is a long half-life and significant amount of peptide is formed in the blood circulation, but it does not seem to have a harmful effect. So in summary, you have probably a new way of supporting the luteal phase. Should we do it in all times? Probably no. Maybe in those rare cases where you don't want to continue HCG and you want to add a certain amount of LH in cycles which are an antagonist cycle where an HCG trigger has been given, this may provide an additional luteal phase. Something we're worth thinking about it is not a routine practice, but what it allows us to do is it allows us to start thinking laterally. It allows us to start thinking about what happens in the middle luteal progesterone. Something which seems to be forgotten. When you do your frozen cycles, when you do your fresh cycles, that mid luteal progesterone has a significance value. Again, thank you very much. If you do want to get involved in this project of teaching, please like the page and then share it. It allows us to further education. Thank you.